The University of North Dakota was founded by people who wanted to make a difference, to better their lives and the lives of others. This strategic vision represents our history and guides our future. A future where people are empowered to make a difference and where the torch of knowledge, reflected in the symbol of our eternal flame, can be passed on to those who want to make a difference. At UND, I lead because the future of healthcare depends on highly trained nurses. I lead by encouraging my peers to stay connected to each other and their community. By analyzing data to help departments make good financial decisions with every stakeholder in mind. By being an ROTC cadet and a full-time student. I lead as a member of a steering team for the University Park neighborhood. By serving as the student representative on the North Dakota State Board of Higher Education. I lead by creating conditions for student success when they apply for national and international scholarships. By using 20 years of experience as an Army aviator to inspire the next generation of Army officers and aviation professionals. I lead by serving as a graduate student on the Strategic Planning Committee. I lead by providing excellent catering services across campus at university events. I lead by teaching and developing courses where students are challenged to learn about and engage with global issues. By keeping the Memorial Union spotless for the faculty, staff, and students. Hello and welcome to UND Leads, a strategic vision for the University of North Dakota. I'm Faith Wall and I serve as the student body president. I'm Bob Newman, I'm the chair of the University Senate. And I'm Paula Cox, staff senate president. We are so thankful, thankful for all of you that could join us in person and online today. We'd like to begin by recognizing that today, the University of North Dakota rests on the ancestral lands of the Pembina and Red Lake bands of Ojibwe and the Dakota Oyate, presently existing as composite parts of the Red Lake, Turtle Mountain, White Earth bands, and the Dakota tribes of Minnesota and North Dakota. We acknowledge the people who re resided here for generations and recognize that the spirit of the Ojibwe and the Oyate, pe Oyate people permeates this land. Uh, as a university community, we will continue to build upon our relations with First Nations of the state of North Dakota, the Mandan, Hidatsa, Arikara Nations, Sistan Wapitan, Oyate Nation, Spirit Lake Nation, Standing Rock Sioux Tribe, and Turtle Mountain Band of Chippewa Indians. UND's strategic planning process started back in February 2022 when President Armacost challenged the UND community to come together and bring their ideas and helping shape the future of this institution. And boy, did you all come rise to that challenge. We had tremendous feedback on where the campus and the community wanted UND to move in the future. This plan integrates the wisdom, voices, hopes, and dreams of the entire UND community. And we were excited to see the ways that each area will see themselves reflected in, in it and how the plan will continue to grow and evolve throughout the years. UND's mission is to provide exceptional educational experiences that enrich the lives of North Dakotans and the global community through excellence in teaching, innovative research, and meaningful engagement. Our vision is to inspire a sense of wonder, a love of discovery, and a commitment to serve. A sense of wonder reflects our belief that critical thinking and dynamic educational experiences are cornerstones to cultivating engaged citizens with the life, uh, who will be lifelong learners. By fostering a love of discovery, we see creativity, research, and innovation as ways to find impactful solutions to some of our greatest challenges. And by affirming our commitment to serve, we aspire to help make our communities better. None of this would have been possible without a deep commitment to our students, employees, alumni, and greater community. By ensuring the University of North Dakota is a place that embraces diverse peoples, perspectives, and ideas, and where everyone knows they belong. This plan will take a collective effort where we're all going to lead where we're able. As leaders, we're defined by the characteristics we embody and the unique perspectives that we share with the world. We all have the capacity to lead as evidenced by our community's civic engagement, 
sense of responsibility, willingness to try new things and adapt, and most importantly, our ability to listen to and uh, value the perspectives of others and to lead with integrity. For UND moving forward, we have identified five key areas or pillars that we will concentrate our efforts on. Learning, equity, affinity, discovery, and service. Each pillar has a set of strategic objectives which outline where UND will focus its efforts as we move forward as an institution. These objectives can be found in your uh, handout today and are laid out in more depth in the full strategic plan which can be found online. We have several speakers this afternoon who are going to highlight the initiatives happening around campus that align with our strategic objectives. We encourage you to think of ways that your departments can live in this plan and ways in which we can accelerate strategic initiatives moving forward. We are so excited to share these ideas with you and continue to build on the rich legacy that started with our UND founders back in 1883, who led with the motto Lux et Lex or Light and Law, showing a passion for discovery and critical thinking along with a disciplined approach and commitment to results that still ring true to this day, as we know it will for generations to come. At, At UND, UND, we, we lead. lead. At the University of North Dakota, students find an environment that is focused on their learning and faculty and staff who are here to help them succeed. With an average class size of 27 and a faculty to student ratio of 17 to 1, students can connect on an individual level and grow in their field of study. UND is a place that encourages a sense of wonder. Here you are challenged to think critically, problem solve, and explore new ideas while surrounded with the tools and support to help you grow and succeed. My teaching philosophy starts with science is for everyone. Everyone can learn anatomy and physiology if given the right tools. And I really view myself as someone who can provide the toolkit and the environment in which to use it. Because learning how to learn is just as, if not more important than the details of the content. I want my students to leave the classroom knowing not just how the human body works, but knowing how to apply that knowledge in their daily lives and future careers. For example, I want them to be able to recognize shoulder flexion in a slap shot at the hockey game, and then also predict how lab values change with different types of anemia. This empowers my students to see beyond the classroom. The College of Engineering and Mines has a long history of offering applied and experiential learning experiences for our students. Our senior design and capstone projects allow them to work side by side with industry partners on product development and through our numerous intern and cooperative education activities, students get to experience work as an engineer or data scientist while they're still in school. At UND, we believe offering applied learning is an important part of the educational experience. And we are proud of the work happening at the College of Engineering and Mines and across campus in this regard. Hello everyone, my name is Chung Hwa Lee, Associate Professor in the Department of Communication. Everything is a learning opportunity for students at UND. I believe my role as an educator is not just to deliver knowledge, but it is to provide opportunities. When I do that, I consider three factors. They are experiential learning, local and global community engagement, and alumni support. First. I'd like to share an example of experiential learning and local community engagement in the, in the classroom. Last spring, one of my classes worked with the Grand Forks Fire Department. Students created uh, their logos, banners, and various promotional materials for the fire department. They also took over their social media and organized a campus-wide event called, with firefighters called Fire Safety Fest. This type of hands-on learning and community engagement is not limited in classrooms. In November 2021, I organized Feel of Korea, a cultural event on campus. To organize this event, I invited the students who are the members of the UND Korean Culture Exchange Club. Most members are American students who are interested in learning Korean cultures. They studied the Korean recipes, ran interactive Korean culture tables, 
and performed K-pop dances for the community. This opportunity helped students grow as more informed global citizens by experiencing diverse cultures. Additionally, our alumni play an important role in students' learning. I developed the alumni mentoring program in the communication department. Students are individually matched with alumni depending on their career goals to get valuable advice from alumni mentors. Here at UND, we have a great group of experts in many different areas, very collaborative communities, and extremely supportive alumni. Learning can be an abstract concept for many students. Students, they, may, they will take many classes, but they still may not be sure about their future. But I'm confident that if we can provide students with the right opportunities and, and uh, the help them uh, make these connections, they will certainly grow as leaders in action. Through the innovative opportunities at UND, students will not only become an expert in their disciplines, but they also will be the major contributors to their community and make us all proud. Thank you so much. brought my family here from Rio Grande City, Texas to Grand Forks, North Dakota was the opportunity to get an education and to get a better life. My experience as a first generation college student was uh, very confusing. I didn't know where to really start. UND has a lot of the support systems that you can go and reach out to and they will help you, they will guide you. I utilize that uh, a lot and that's what has uh, led to my success. I graduated with a bachelor's in criminal justice in uh, May of uh, 2019. My role as police officer right now, it's, it's great. I love helping people any way I can. It's, 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 a, it's a job of a lifetime. Currently at UND, one in five students are first generation, meaning that neither parent has completed a four-year college degree. This matters because these students can't ask their parents questions on college enrollment and other processes, leading to many first-gen students experiencing imposter syndrome or not feeling like they belong in college. UND supports first-gen students specifically through TRIO programs, as well as through services provided by Academic Advisement, One Stop, Financial Aid, and Enrollment Services, to name a few. The university continues to provide a high-quality education at an affordable rate, aiming to ensure that finances are not the barrier to higher education. Our scholarship, tuition waiver, and financial aid programs help provide access to funding for all students. We are proud to be a part of making sure students are supported and successful during their time at UND. The Recruitment and Retention of American Indians into Nursing, or RAIN program, provides individualized advising, mentoring, and culturally appropriate support for American Indian students seeking a nursing degree. We are proud to have assisted over 325 students. We are here to support American Indian students and be your home away from home as you seek your degree. I've been asked to speak about equity and what that means for UND. And we all know that equity and equitable practices go far beyond the classroom and far beyond campus boundaries. Like many of us here, our programs and the efforts of our students, our faculty, and our staff have wide and lasting impacts. It is therefore essential that diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility be centered and embedded in all that we do. My name is Caitlin Milera, and I'm the director of the North Dakota Space Grant Consortium, a statewide NASA research and education program housed here at UND. We offer scholarships, research fellowships, NASA internships, and more to students at all of the public colleges and universities and tribal colleges in our state. We inspire and engage North Dakotans with space. I mean, let's be real, what's cooler than space? And 
Our, while our opportunities are open to all students, we do place a large focus on students in STEM fields. And STEM fields are notorious for inequitable practices, producing countless barriers for individuals from minoritized, underrepresented, and underserved communities from active participation. Our goal with Space Grant is to create an environment where all are invited, all feel welcome, and all are provided the necessary tools to succeed. One of the programs we started a couple of years ago in partnership with NASA and the South Carolina and North Carolina Space Grant Consortia was our Ideas Program, which brings K-12 teachers together for professional development workshops focused on accessibility. We work on NASA and STEM lesson plans, developing adaptations for these NASA activities to be accessible to all users. Last summer, we even hosted this workshop here at UND with educators from across the country. And the North Dakota Vision Services and School for the Blind participated and even toured the teachers around their facility. We are very thankful for our partnership with them and their students. We also have a scholarship named after Ms. Pearl I. Young, a UND alumna from 1919. She triple majored in physics, math, and chemistry more than 100 years ago and became the first woman to work in a technical position at NASA back when it was called the NACA. This annual scholarship is open to women and students who identify outside the gender binary, and applications are due February 15th. And truly, we would not be the successful space grant that we are without our students. We are beyond proud of the initiatives that our STEM ambassadors have led. During COVID, our students developed virtual experiences, allowing for students, regardless of geographic location, to tour the Department of Space Studies Human Spaceflight Laboratory, including the Spacesuit Lab and Inflatable Habitat. Our team also developed an accessible virtual escape room so we could continue to engage students who are blind and low vision in space sciences even from a distance. These space grant stories are, of course, only a small slice of some of the equitable practices being led here at UND. We must continue to share stories, center voices, and not be afraid to fail in our journey toward equity. Our employees are an invaluable asset to UND. We talk to folks all across campus about what it means to feel valued and supported as an employee. We found that people feel most valued when they have a chance to provide input on important projects and decisions. We also found it's important to acknowledge and celebrate the good work people are doing. Something as small as a thank you can go a long way. In order for UND to achieve our mission, we must recruit and retain a vibrant workforce. When people feel a sense of belonging at UND, they are motivated to do their best and they will want to stay. We support our employees by providing resources and opportunities for success. UND leads by ensuring that our people are at the center of all we do. When you feel supported, valued, seen, and celebrated, you're more likely to engage to give back and feel like you are part of a community. As a gay staff member and the Pride Center director, I'm always looking at ways in which we integrate topics of LGBTQ inclusion in our academic programs, our campus events, our retention initiatives, and our everyday social interactions. We aim to enhance similar initiatives happening across campus, working to ensure all people can be celebrated for who they are and know they belong. UND attracts many military-affiliated students through its offered programs and dedication to fostering a military-friendly environment. Many UND employees and community members have served and understand the sacrifices made and the experiences of these students. We offer numerous scholarships for veterans along with advising support and help processing VA benefits and tuition assistance. Additionally, UND is home to both Air Force and Army ROTC programs where future leaders are developed. Through UND's active veteran student organization, our veteran student lounge, campus memorials, and programs we offer, we work to ensure our students know they are valued and supported. Hello everyone, my name is Tyler Burmeister and I'm the Assistant Athletic Director for Student Athlete Development, where I oversee the personal, professional, and leadership development of UND student athletes. In college athletics, the recruiting process begins early. Prospective student athletes from all over the world weigh out their options to ultimately find home for the next four years. And a lot of important factors go into this decision, such as reputation and prestige of the program, facilities, campus atmosphere, programs and faculty, support staff, and opportunities to grow. These factors are the same that every student will have to weigh in ultimately making their decision on where to attend college. 
Ultimately, though, there is one factor that weighs above the rest, a sense of belonging. This sense of belonging will long last after a student has earned their degree from the University of North Dakota. And to quote UND head football coach Bubba Schweigert, we don't recruit you for four years, we recruit you for the next 40 plus years. There's a special connection that one gets from the opportunity experiences here at UND. Whether it's discovering your academic or professional passions, getting involved in one of the 260 plus student organizations and clubs, attending a sold out Ralph Engelstad Arena, or immersing yourself in the many campus and community events, all are sure to find their own unique campus experience. And this experience is transformational. Our legacies and traditions are continuously passed on. The affinity to Grand Forks and the University of North Dakota is a bond that cannot be broken. We see this time and time again from the tremendous support from our alumni, offering their time, treasure, and talent, mentoring and providing access to the next wave of leaders in action who will continue to pass that forward. We see this from current students participating in the Green Bandana Project, an initiative spearheaded by the Student Athlete Advisory Committee and Student Athletes for Inclusion and Diversity, aimed at lending mental health resources and, and suicide prevention to our peers here on campus. Or our work with the Community Violence Intervention Center, Students for Diver Student Diversity and Inclusion, and the Pride Center to name a few, ensuring that we have a welcoming and safe campus for all. And finally, we see this from our faculty, staff, and coaches who invest so much in those that they serve. We are able to invest to this commitment to service because we have a campus and a community that invests in us. Celebrating our achievements or contributing to our professional development, we feel supported in our work. A common charge that we hear in the athletic department is we get to. The important responsibility and honor in our work. Well, let me say it is an honor to say that we get to call the flagship university of the state of North Dakota our home. Thank you. UND's role as a research institution is to advance personal and societal well-being. Through a spirit of inquiry, we are better able to understand the world around us when we adopt scientific principles and problem-solving skills that support discoveries. This includes advancing strong data-driven decision-making skills, support for future research efforts to address thorny problems, and a willingness to work collaboratively as interdisciplinary teams. In my last decade with the University of North Dakota, I've led and served on more than two dozen grants and contracts focused specifically on serving rural and under-resourced communities. To accomplish the goals of my research, evaluation, and service grants, it was imperative to work collaboratively with not only other schools, departments, and colleagues at UND, but with other organizations, partners, and stakeholders throughout North Dakota. We know that if we want to make change in community, it needs to be led by community. We are continually developing strategy to increase our research, discovery, and innovation at UND. We have led the way in energy security and environmental sustainability, tackled health challenges that impact North Dakotans more than anywhere else, supported rural community health, driven world-changing developments of autonomous systems, and provided robust data analysis for North Dakota, and have been a national leader in space. By focusing on the amazing depth and breadth of research at UND, we have seen our research expenditures increase from 100 to 150 million in a relatively short amount of time. This has taken a collective effort between leadership, research faculty and staff, and the important work of the support staff. Seeing this kind of collaboration and growth at UND has been incredibly exciting. Hi, my name is Chiming Tan. I'm the Page Professor in Economics and the Associate Dean for Research at the Nisla College of Business and Public Administration. And I'm here to talk to you about discovery. Discovery, advancing the frontiers of knowledge, constitutes a core mission of any flagship university. As President Amakos is saying at, um, at lunch just now, it is something that we all contribute to. It is an activity that's undertaken all across our campus by faculty and staff researchers, undergraduate and graduate students, and it is something that's absolutely integral to what we do here at UND and to our identity. 
This new strategic plan is designed to help us achieve our mission. Now, before we talk about the plan, let's talk a little bit about who we are. Our folks here at UND have chosen their careers out of deep passion. They are women and men who take ownership of their respective disciplines, take pride in being at the very forefront of their expert domains, and bring with them an enthusiasm that's infectious, that animates and inspires those they teach and that they advise. Their work is transformative, impactful, and targets some of the biggest questions of our times. Consider following examples. In science and technology, our engineers and aerospace scientists are working right now under a NASA grant to develop the next generation of communications networks to be used in space. The goal is to create a reliable, low latency, high speed communication system that will facilitate humanity's ability to engage in the ultimate act of discovery, space exploration. As uh, Professor Malara uh, was saying uh, just a moment ago, what's cooler than space? Right. In energy and environmental sciences, our ERC researchers are working on cutting edge carbon capture and storage technologies. These technologies are likely to prove crucial to mankind's ability to slow climate change, something that's both a generational and an existential challenge to us and our planet. In the humanities and the arts, the annual UND Writers' Conference, supported by the National Endowment for the Arts, is now in its 54th year. It has brought together leading authors, poets, and artisans and provided them with a platform to share their creative works with the broader community, enriching all of our lives here in North Dakota and the Upper Plains, and connecting us, importantly, to our shared humanity, something that's absolutely vital in our times. They put up a beacon in these times of polarization. In the arena of public policy, various institutes and centers across campus, such as Nisla uh, College's Institute of Policy and Business Analytics, and yes, that's a shameless plug for my college. Uh, the College of Education and Human Development's Bureau of um, Evaluation and Research Service, the School of Laws Institute for the Study of Tribal Gaming Law and Policy, the Mountain Plains Mental Health Technology Transfer Center, the Center for Rural Health, the Center for Innovation. All of these institutions and organizations work to inform and advance our understanding of issues that are important to our community, issues related to rural health care, the regional economy, North Dakota's workforce, and much, much more. With this new strategic plan, UND wants us to continue to think big, and it wants to help all of us to go big. This plan builds on a previous one, but goes much further. It explicitly and unequivocally champions freedom of expression and inquiry. It recognizes that increasingly impactful research stem from multidisciplinary collaborations and wants to support faculty members who pursue such collaborations. It encourages all of us to connect what we do to the concerns of our community, to forge partnerships with public and private entities, and to demonstrate how our work advances the understanding of issues that are at the very forefront of contemporary public discourse. And for all of our faculty and staff, for whom annual evaluations, promotion, and tenure are issues of central concern, I'm one of them, I've been there, <laughs> it acknowledges that individual units and departments are best placed to evaluate the output from research and creative efforts and insists that these processes be appropriate, be transparent, be fair, and be measurable. This new strategic plan, put together of extensive input from the UND community, will allow us to sustain and nurture a first-rate research environment, one where all of our efforts are properly recognized. It will help us to attract and retain the most highly skilled, the most talented professors to UND. Why? Because our amazing students deserve to be thought by the very best. And this is what we get when we come together as a community, all of us in this room, all of us online, to exercise shared governance, to determine the direction in which we want our institution, our home, to go. We built a great university 
one that does great things. And that is why UND leads. Thank you so much. Each year in August, faculty and administrators new to UND can get a glimpse of North Dakota by taking part in the annual bus tour. Tour experiences allow participants to feel more strongly connected to the state, to our campus, and to one another. Many participants not only form lasting friendships, but they leave with ideas on how their work can help serve our students and the state. ND Hopes seeks to reduce suicide, morbidity, and mortality among rural residents, veterans, and LGBTQIA and Two-Spirit youth in Western North Dakota. The project would not be possible without building strong partnerships beyond UND. Examples include NORC at the University of Chicago, numerous state agencies, healthcare organizations, nonprofit groups, and community partners. Our goal with all partners is to support the work that they are already doing in suicide prevention and build upon this. It is important for us at UND to bring all relevant parties to the table when addressing the issues of our state and world. At the University of North Dakota School of Law, the Family Law Clinical Practicum fills a critical legal need in the state of North Dakota. Our second and third year law students have the opportunity to serve as attorneys for our clients, as advocates in the courtroom, as well as negotiators in mediation settings. The clinical practicum allows our future lawyers and law school to give back to our beloved state by providing legal services at no cost to the individual. Our culture of collaboration is paramount to UND's success, locally, nationally, and even globally. Fortunately, our ability to work with others, exchanging resources across a broad range of partners, including everything from academic institutions to small and large businesses to the U.S. Department of Defense, is evident and flourishing throughout campus. But whether we call it collaboration, partnership, or joint force, it's our culture that keeps those doors open and those relationships alive. And we must be mindful of that, even in this time of growth. Thank you for having me today. My name is Anna Rolson, and I'm currently in my final semester of the Accelerated Master of Public Administration program here at UND. Outside of the classroom, I support the Political Science and Public Administration Department as a graduate research assistant, in addition to Special Olympics North Dakota as their school and youth coordinator. Being both a student and working professional within Grand Forks has given me the ability to embrace some of the unique service opportunities that are afforded to a college town. And I must say, it is a true honor to speak with you all about the value of service in the UND LEADS strategic plan. My freshman year, I became involved with the UND Special Olympics College Club and went on to serve as the club president. The UND Special Olympics Club, which functions under Special Olympics North Dakota, is much more than a sports organization and focuses on creating meaningful opportunities for individuals of all backgrounds and abilities. The club engages with the local and state communities through events like flag football, floor hockey, inclusion weeks, polar plunges, and so much more. In fact, Earlier this month, the University of North Dakota was honored as an ESPN Top 5 Special Olympics National Unified Champion Banner School, leading the way to become the very first school in North Dakota history to receive this honor. My involvement with Special Olympics has never felt like a sacrifice. Rather, it is something that has helped to enrich my life. There are many ways that we can intentionally support those in our communities, whether this be through student organizations, experiential learning, educational collaborations, or state partnerships. The university experience gives individuals the freedom to find areas of service that they are interested in and then actively expand upon the work that is already being accomplished. Consider student organizations like The Big Event, which is a coordinated day of service opportunities in the Grand Forks area, or Engineers Without Borders, which gives students the chance to use the skills that they have learned in the classroom to develop sustainable infrastructure projects in communities across the globe. Yet, service does not stop with our students. 
Faculty and staff can support the service endeavors of our students, along with using their own knowledge, skills, and abilities to find connections that will advance our communities. As alumni, we can continue to serve the UND community as thought leaders and mentors, and in any aspect of our lives, we must be responsible stewards of the gifts and talents that we have been given. Together, these efforts will support the university's path to strengthening services and addressing the many grand challenges that we see within society. Service is a commitment to people and communities. Thus, by embracing collaboration and civic engagement, we can continue to build better tomorrows at the University of North Dakota and throughout the world. So, how will you lead through service? Thank you. Well, how about that? How about a round of applause for all of our speakers? Well done. And thanks to all who stepped up in the video as well to record their pieces and to describe their stories, which represent a part of the mosaic that is uh, the University of North Dakota. They are a part of the future that we are going to create. And thank you to all the members of the Strategic Planning Committee and all the working groups for the incredible efforts, the discussions, the many debates that have happened over the last 11 months. Let me talk a little bit about the concept of leadership. I can't think of a better example than the gentleman uh, seated on my left. Greg Page is a 1973 alum from the Nistler College, and he served as the CEO of the Cargill Corporation, one of the world's largest agricultural products companies. This fall, he gave what I felt was probably the best leadership speech I had ever heard. Among his many notable quotes was this characterization of leadership. It is hard to be a leader if you are not listening. The world keeps changing. It requires a leader to listen and put themselves in the position of being a curious student before they put themselves in the position of being a boss. Greg also spoke about other key aspects of leadership, such as learning how to respond rather than to react. He noted that feedback is vitally important and sometimes uncomfortable, but it should be never delivered in an unkind manner. Remember that your attitude can set the tone for an entire organization. And as Greg pointed out, there will be tough decisions ahead, and many of them will certainly be imperfect. I want everyone, faculty, staff, students, alumni, members of the UND community, all of them to know that I'm listening and UND's administration is listening. We want to hear your ideas and receive your feedback on the decisions that lay ahead. We are counting on it to move forward as a university. I bring this up to highlight several important elements of the quote, the importance of empathy and curiosity. And UND must create opportunities for our students, staff, and faculty to lead. And you heard examples of this just a few moments ago. Leaders on campus, leaders in the community, leaders in one's field, leaders among peers, leaders in volunteer organizations. We all lead in some way. And regardless of the role that you play on our campus, leadership comes in so many forms, like our Senate presidents, Bob Newman, Paula Cox, and Faith Wall, who took the mantle of leadership to represent the membership of our campus like our wonderful vice presidents and deans who I'm privileged to serve alongside who have taken formal roles of leadership on our campus. Like Roxy, my friend at the University Pizzeria, who brings it day in and day out with the world's best pizza. Like Larry, a BST at the Hislop Sports Center who has inspired me through his quiet commitment. 
or Crystal Alberts and Lane Lyons who have stepped up beyond compare to ensure our repatriation efforts honor the tribal ancestors. Our campus is alive with such examples. And no matter what position you hold, individually, you can make a difference. As we move forward to implement UND leads, I'd like each of you to think about how the five pillars represented in this plan relate to your job and what you can do to lead in your own way. In this spirit of gratitude, let me recognize Jim Machorek and Lynette Kronelka, the two co-chairs of our strategic planning committee. How about a round of applause for the two of them? They deserve so much thanks and great recognition for leading this massive effort across our campus for the past year. As with the symbol of UND's eternal flame, on behalf of the university, at lunch today, I presented Jim and Lynette a rendition of the eternal flame done by local uh, artist uh, Dave Badman. It's his version of this amazing artifact that exists on our campus. At our kickoff meeting 11 months ago, which you see here, I shared my hope that this plan would reflect the rich history of UND and the local community and reflect the aspiration of what we want to become. And this is exactly what this team has delivered. From the day I arrived on campus, I've been inspired by the words of a traditional UND song, the alma mater. Its words relate directly to our mission and vision statements. And I think I shared it on that day 11 months ago. Let's tie it to the strategic plan. Hail to thee, O alma mater, hail to thee with heart and tongue. Pride we feel and love yet greater while we raise our grateful song. This talks about the affinity we have with UND. Home of lofty thought and learning. It's about learning and discovery. Beacon or our Western land. That's about the service we provide, the hope we give to the state and the region. Shrine whence still the ever burning torch about learning and discovery is passed from hand to hand, from person to person, and no better way to recognize the sense of equity and affinity to make sure all hands are represented. Unfortunately, we only sing this song three times a year at commencement ceremonies. Most of us don't know the words, but maybe now you will, because as you seek to connect our new UND Leeds strategic plan, you can now connect it to the alma mater you'll remember some of those historical and aspirational lines. And so let me continue with a the musical theme for the next part of uh, my presentation. You might be familiar with the term canon, a musical canon. This is a musical piece that repeats a theme over and over again, kind of like a round, row, row, row your boat, for example. One of the most famous canons may have played at your wedding. This is Pachelbel's Canon in D. It starts with a very simple theme. That theme is repeated through the entire song with new variations played each time through. And yet it's still the same underlying theme. The variations in the theme bring additional excitement to the theme itself. The pillars of our strategic plan must be our recurring theme. As we speak about the opportunities, the challenges, and the accomplishments that happen on our campus, we will and must do so through the lens of these pillars. Learning, equity, affinity, discovery, service, the sense of wonder, the sense of fairness, the sense of togetherness, the sense of creativity, and the commitment to serve. These are the elements of our canon. And we will play that canon to tell the story of UND to the legislature, to our alumni, to our community partners, to our prospective students, to our future colleagues on the staff and the faculty. They must see in us our commitment to these ideals. The central idea of our strategic plan can be expressed in many different ways just as the central theme of a canon is used to build upon and expand the main theme. And each of us 
can build upon those central pillars of UND leads to find new ways, large and small, to incorporate them into our everyday work and into our lives. There are no limits to what we can achieve individually and as a group when we work towards this common goal. So I ask you today, how will you play your canon? How will you build that theme to make UND a better place for our students, for our faculty, for our staff, for ourselves? How will we make it better for the citizens of North Dakota, for our country, and for the world? How will we promote learning, equity, affinity, discovery, and service in your life, both on and off campus? And how can we do this work together as a campus community? Now, it's also important to note that we aren't abandoning one UND. The, the, the plan, the strategic plan that um, finished in 2022, it guided us for the past five years and yielded a number of amazing accomplishments for our campus. Areas that are critical to our success, such as student retention and student success. And we fully recognize that the future requires a new plan, an aspirational plan, to lead us. And we're building on the success found under One UND. And UND leads will build upon the university's history and the legacy of serving the needs of North Dakota and its citizens. And we brought a number of copies of the plan with us. I have one here. Mine's going to be dog-eared. It's going to have coffee spills. It's going to have marginalia written in the, in the, in the margins. Um, this is going to be a working document, one that's always under thought and under revision. But we'll have copies during the reception, which will happen to, to the south here just after I finish uh, this talk. Um, we will use this plan to make the university better. It will be a reminder of the incredible campus-wide work that went into this plan, but also the aspirations and the future that this plan entails. It will sit alongside many other key reports on my desk that will point to the future of our great campus. And we've also made it easy for you to, to access this plan uh, by putting it on the website. So it's at und.edu slash leads. I think we can all remember that. Or if you wish, pull out your phone and snap a shot of the QR code behind me. Um, it's important for us to make sure that we update that site, keep you apprised of the progress that we're making, and talk about our successes on a daily basis through the lens of this plan. I also ask the committee for their recommendations on how we move forward with a structure that will allow us to execute this plan. And they've presented a concept involving an integrated planning team with broad representation across the campus. I think one of the successes of the development of the plan was the broad involvement. We will continue that idea and that notion as we execute this plan. So I guess that means another large committee. Jim, Lynette, Yin? They've done enough work already, for sure. The provost and I are crafting ideas about how we can formalize the structure to enable the work that goes on and to make sure that we have that broad participation at the same time the resources and the expertise to support the execution of the plan. Our goal is to harness the talents and energy that exists across the campus that was shown so deeply in the construction of UND Leeds. But we're going to do it without what the committee calls administrative bloat. Correct. Correct, says the provost. And again, it's going to be the collective wisdom and the energy that exists on campus that will make this happen. And we've already capitalized upon shared governance bodies uh, to modify how we approach the critical elements of the implementation of new initiatives through our new strategic investment process. We've done a lot of work thinking about how we can build in the voice of the Senates uh, into the decision-making process that will move the strategy forward for our university. And over the last year, we've refocused our Senate's budget committee to include them in the prioritization of strategic initiatives that will improve our campus. This plan will be a living plan with annual updates of priorities and initiatives that connect with each of the five pillars. Specific work in each of these areas will be further described in planning documents, such as our strategic enrollment plan, our DEIA plan, our physical campus plan, our research and creative activities plan, and others as well. Each will be guided by the principles that exist within UND Leads. And on the UND Leads website, we'll have a, a page that says, how are we doing? Which will allow the entire campus 
and the community to track the progress that we're making with, with assessment results and key metrics. And beyond the work of this integrated planning team, each of us will lead and contribute in our own ways, inspiring a sense of UND pride that creates and encourages the spirit of curiosity, the wonder of discovery, and the desire to learn. It will lead to a more equitable university, educating graduates and developing leaders with affinity for UND that reflects what we and they want the university to be. And as I step off the stage, I encourage you to stick around for the reception, to talk to the people who were involved in the creation of this plan. You'll have a chance to participate in the conversation about how you will lead and, and the initiatives that you and your colleagues might be considering as we move forward. Just as we began the strategic planning process with a sticky note exercise, we're gonna do the same today. We have UND leads sticky notes that you can respond with uh, to a variety of questions that will be posted in the reception room. Let's fill the walls with your ideas. And join me in helping to realize the vision and accomplishing the mission that the members of our campus have created. And let's remember UND leads today, tomorrow, forever. Thank you. We done? I think we've only just begun.